I promise you, this is not clickbait. There is one tiny setting on your camera that will change the game. I've come to realize that a lot of people don't actually change the setting. So your camera will automatically come with the setting adjusted to AWB, which means auto white balance. And a lot of people don't actually realize they need to change it. Auto white balance can make your photos look a bit weird. So it can sort of give them these sort of weird white and blue tinges because the objective of auto white balance is to pick up all the different bits of white and to really expose them a bit more than usual. Ultimately, having that setting to AWB means that your camera doesn't actually understand the scene that it's looking at and it sort of takes control and really takes over the scene so you essentially have no control over what's going on. It's almost like shooting with your camera in automatic instead of manual. Even if you're shooting manual setting and you've not changed this and you've kept it to AWB, you've still not got complete control over what's happening or what you're trying to capture. What I recommend doing is changing from AWB to daylight. This will make the colors of your photos really natural and just bring them out a lot more than AWB ever could. This will help you achieve the very, very best result, no matter what niche of photography you're in and it will just allow for you to have complete control over the temperature of the photo. Once I made this change, I noticed a big, big difference, especially in the post-editing process. I wasn't spending as much time trying to create a bit more of a natural color. So that to me was like a win-win situation. Also, as soon as I captured the photo and I tethered it straight to my laptop, I could see straight away that the colors were just a lot more rich and vibrant. I felt like with AWB, the temperature was just a bit colder. It was just, yeah, it just was wasn't, how do I say this? It wasn't as appealing. Making this tiny change has really cut down my editing process in half. Let me know if it was as life-changing for you as it was for me, because honestly, it changed the game. I'm also gonna do a quick Q&A. Starting with question number one, which is, what is the scope of filmmaking and photography in Scotland? I would say the demand for videographers and photographers is bigger than it has ever been before, not only in Scotland, but worldwide. I work with clients in Scotland, all over the world, and I am always, always busy. There's always demand, there's always clients that are looking for something, whether that be commercial, whether that be restaurants, hotels, you know, websites, smaller businesses. I mean, there's always, always someone looking for you. Of course, there are more sort of slower times, like I would say like the summertime and coming into Christmas, those times are usually very, very slow. But that makes sense because that's the same in sort of a lot of corporations and businesses as well. But I would say there's a huge, huge demand for photographers and videographers. I mean, people need images. They're all competing with each other, especially on social media, to be like the best and look the best and look the quirkiest and look sort of the most creative and edgiest. So. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason why you should think that there's no there's no scope or there's no work out there or whatever. I mean, I feel like there's just, I always say, never leave a stone unturned. And I think that's our job as well to go and seek these clients um, that might need our services. And most of the times when you reach out, they're like, yeah, I didn't realize that I actually needed you until you sent me an email. I think that there is a big, big scope for it. I think there's a big need all over the world and I mean, it's a great thing, there's so many of us. At the end of a photo shoot, what is actually edible? Well, <laughs> I think it depends. I would say everything is edible, definitely. I would say 95% of what I shoot is edible. The other 5% is genuinely things like a couple of herbs I've thrown on. You know what, something that's actually not edible, I'll tell you, is something that I've manhandled a lot. So if I am having to go in and constantly touch it up, and that doesn't happen with a lot of food, but there are cases where I have to genuinely go in and touch it over and over and over again. And in situations like that, I mean, that wouldn't be eaten just because I've touched it so much and it just becomes a bit like a bit minging, you know, when you sort of touch something a bit too much, you know, and you're like, oh, that doesn't happen often. So I'll give you a good example. This, this ice cream photo, that was one of my biggest nightmares ever to photograph. And I loved the results, they came out really good, but I mean, I just touched it so much that by the end of the day, I was like, I can't even look at the ice cream or I can't even have someone eating the ice cream because of how much 
I've actually touched it, freezed it, refreezed it, freezed it, refreezed it. I mean, it was never ending. So yeah, I mean, that is a situation where something wouldn't get eaten. But apart from that, I mean, we're speaking the very rare piece of food that has to be touched a bit too much or the odd herb. Apart from that, everything is edible. What is your least favorite thing about your job and favorite thing? Okay, I can tell you right now that my least favorite thing is going to the supermarket. I hate it. I hate going because obviously like I have to buy, you know, additional ingredients that go on things or things that complement products or you name it, I have to go to the supermarket. I think everyone at the checkout already knows me because I just go there pretty much every day. I have to like separate things by client so to get the receipt. So I have to, I've got a basket of stuff and I'm having to whip out what's for, oh don't. I mean the whole thing is just, I hate it so much. So my most favorite thing is when I can see what the client and I have envisioned together and make it come to life. That is what I love doing the most. I mean, that is just what makes my heart sing. Just, oh, just speaking about it, I'm like, ee, like I just love it. It's really, it's really nice. It's like the favorite, favorite part of my job. And when the client's happy, that is just, yeah. I mean, it's the icing on the cake for me, I love it. What is the extent of retouching that you have to do in food photography, if any? as if it was fashion photography. I think you would be surprised that it's not as much as you'd think. Now, this may really vary from food photographer to food photographer, but to be honest, not as much as you would think. Sure, there's the odd Photoshop moment that needs to be done, but I try and capture everything as much as possible for the camera so that the editing process is pretty seamless. If I see something, so I shoot tethered, and if I see something that comes up on my screen that's needing changed or a bit of sauces needing added or things are just not looking quite right, I can change it then and there and it makes a big, big difference. How or why did you end up specifically in food photography? Oh my gosh, I hope I don't bore you all to tears with this story. I have actually spoken about this in a previous video, I think. Basically what happened was, I worked in hospitality for 10 years. Prior to this, I know I look 12, but I'm actually 28, so <laughs> for all of you out there, please. But I have been working in hospitality for 10 years. I went to hotel school when I was 16 and I was convinced I wanted to be Gordon Ramsay, so I actually started out like my hospitality career really in culinary arts and you know I worked in a couple of Michelin star restaurants and all that but then I realized that it wasn't for me as in the high pressure kitchen environment I preferred that I realized that I preferred cooking more in a home environment I learned so much about food though and how it should be presented how it should look how it should taste you know I mean things like that really really invaluable pieces of knowledge from experts so that was amazing from realizing that I didn't really want to do culinary arts, I then moved into all different types of hospitality roles just to figure out what I wanted. And then I realized that I really loved sales and I sort of fell into sales. This was a very quick process. Fell into sales and then became a sales and marketing manager for a massive hotel in Scotland. After two years of like, I mean working, I mean anyone who works hospitality will know it's like 16 hour days and it doesn't change whatever role you are. I mean, the higher up you get, I feel like the worse it is. So after two years, I hung up my hospitality boots and I just thought, you know what, I, I really just don't think this is for me. And also when I was sales and marketing manager, they removed the marketing bit from everyone sort of across this chain because they thought that we needed to focus more on sales. And when they took that away, I mean, it's almost that thing, isn't it? You take something away, that's when you realize you wanted it and you loved it the most. And that's when I realized I love marketing. So what I wanted to do was really understand more about digital marketing. And I actually thought I wanted to pursue a career in digital marketing off the back of it. So I was convinced I wanted to pursue a career in digital marketing because I do think that is the future, it's the present as we speak. Alongside it, I started a food blog because I've always been a huge foodie, as I told you. I mean, I was convinced I wanted to be Gordon Ramsay. So I just thought I'll just do it as a great creative outlet. You know, I miss doing something creative like that. So I just thought I'm just gonna, you know, take quick quick pics. That's the bit I realized I loved the most when I started taking these photos, learn more about how to use a camera properly and then sort of the passion just snowballed and I then eventually, I remember I did a photography course, uh, just a quick one, it was like a one day thing online. I was like enlightened and I went up to Callum and I said, I think I really want to pursue food photography as a career. 
And he said, yeah, you should definitely do it. I mean, it started from there. And then shortly after that, I found my first client. So here we are. It's not, I mean, it makes it sound really easy, but it was, it was difficult. And obviously it's very difficult to put yourself out there. Just do things when you're not ready because you will be ready and even if you feel like you're not you will get there i mean the most important thing is starting yes i mean that's the story i hope i didn't bore you all to tears with it but yes essentially that is it i went from starting just a fun creative food blog to having this crazy passion for food photography and actually being very good at it so that's it basically in a nutshell what is the one thing you wish someone would have asked you and I actually <laughs> put this in my pile because I was really laughing with it. I wish someone would have asked me what my favourite styling tool is and that is baking paper or parchment paper, whatever you want to call it. I love baking paper. I put it in so many of my photos, especially if you want something to look a bit more rustic, like very in your own home kitchen. People can almost imagine themselves sat at a table and really sort of helping themselves or make it really... I can't explain it. There is a vibe to baking paper. So that is the question I wish someone would have asked me. But the thing with baking paper, if anyone wants to try it out, scrunch it up. So rip out the piece that you want and then scrunch it because I'm telling you, it will make such, such a difference to the texture of whatever photo you've got. So trust me on that one, that's a little tip for you. That is a wrap on today's video. Thank you so much for watching as always. I really, really appreciate it. Leave me a comment below. I love to hear from you as always and I will see you very soon. Mm -hmm.